nice to have you back, and it's so nice to be back in the field with you. You're at my place. Welcome back, eh? Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. So nice to be here. Should we show people our eyes? We're, we're cool. We're very cool. You're, you're, really, you're really cool. So, <laughs> so it's, it's not too hot of a day. No, it's beautiful um, out here. And we're out here in the blueberry patch. We are. We've been picking blueberries since almost mid-July, and it's now late August. Mm. We have uh, several different varieties of blueberries. And um, you want a snack before you ask me any questions? Sure, sure. You can pick them too on, on your side. Oh, I got <clears> my own little... Sure, you gave yeah. me a bear bush. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> no, sure, take as many as you want, guys. There's none on there. Thanks a lot. <laughs> How about this one? This is anyway, um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a later variety. <laughs> And we'll be picking these blueberries probably almost till mid mid September. You have trouble with the birds? Yes, we do. Um, you ever we, put nets over these, or is that too much trouble? We've gone to, in fact, that way, it should be on right now. It's on a timer, but um, with the last rain, it <clears throat> blew the um, it tripped the circuit. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so we have to readjust the the timer setting. Uh, so usually it's it's called an air crow, and it just kind of flops up every once in a while hmm. and scares the birds away. Oh. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, I've seen some places put, um, they put balloons in the field? Yeah, we so do that. What we do, is that for? Um, they're called scare eye balloons, mm. and um, they scare the birds away. For, and it works, usually it works for about three days, and the, bird, <clears throat> the birds get used to it. Oh, I've seen it in the cornfields. Yep. Is that predominantly where they put it, in the cornfields? No, we've or? used them in the blueberries as well. They have, yeah. But it works better in a cornfield because in a cornfield, usually the corn's ready and then it's all gone and harvested mm -hmm. within seven days. So if you put the scare eye balloons out there, you know, the first three to five days it works and then it doesn't work so well. Oh. But then after day seven, you're taking it out anyway because it's all been harvested. <laughs> <clears throat> but in the case of the blueberries, you can see we're harvesting for two months. So we need something better. So this uh, will continue on for two more months? Uh, so about another three next, weeks. Yeah, oh, another yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Mid-September. Mid That's great. You can see the, the all the green ones still on here. So, yeah. you know, a blueberry <clears throat> a blueberry like this okay. won't be ready for um, oh, the green probably one, yeah. about another two weeks at least. Oh. All right. All right. So those are the blueberries. Yep. We planted them probably about six years ago. Oh, and yeah. um, I remember when they were little. Yeah. Every year they're getting bigger and bigger. So give them another two or three years, and they'll probably be about this high, and at full full maturity, pretty much. How much? And how many blueberries do you get from, well, say one bush? Would, would you get like a pint or? From one bush, you might average somewhere between ten and twenty pints. Oh, really? That's good. Average. That's I mean, you might a have lot some of blueberries from one, it from is, one little it bush. It is. It is. You know. You know, some varieties bear better than others, hmm. obviously. Uh, this being a later variety, I find this flavor is not quite as sweet. Um, but they're already at a time where the, the better flavor varieties are no longer available. Now, what, what is this called? <clears throat> uh, this variety is called Elliot. It's now, what a, are the other ones? Uh, so the common? earlier varieties are actually towards that side. Oh, I remember them. They yeah, really and uh, again, those we started harvesting around July, here are the birds, around July 10th. Uh, there's the Duke, Duke, Chandler, uh, Blue oh. Crop, Blue Ray, Patriot. Now, are they sweeter? They are, yeah. But we do have some sweeter things out here you can go eat if you want. We just have some strawberries and some raspberries. Let's head out there's, there. All right, then. All let's right. go. Let's go for the sweet stuff. <laughs> Besides you, Dave. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dave, now we're in the strawberry patch. Now we're in the strawberry patch. It's um, usually people think of strawberries as a June crop. Mm. Uh, we do have strawberries in June, but we also grow some other varieties, some newer varieties. Um, if you think about it, there's strawberries coming out of California almost year-round, so they've developed new varieties that are not day-light sensitive. Mm. Um, so most of the strawberries uh, are June-bearing because they know it's the, the, the longest time of year. Oh. And so they're triggered by day length um, to mature at that time of year. Uh, this variety here is called, considered a, a day neutral variety, where, whereas it doesn't, they've, they've you know, done a lot of breeding and they've mm. picked out some varieties that are not sensitive uh, in their maturity date to the day length. So this variety actually will produce pretty much year round until we get a frost. Oh, that's great. Yeah. 
So. Because I know, I know a couple of times we've had late strawberries uh -huh. over here. Yeah. We unfortunately we actually came through and picked these this morning. I guess so. <laughs> I don't think we've got any uh, we could go over to the other side of the patch where you could have some slightly underripe <laughs> strawberries. Look at, look at the corn. It's a rogue corn over there. <laughs> it's just right in the middle of the strawberry patch. <clears throat> so this variety, um, uh, we'll pick this right until we get a frost in October. Obviously with a cooler weather, it'll slow down in its maturity. Um, but it, it's kind of nice having these strawberries in the, all summer long right oh, into absolutely. September. When we get these periods where it's, um, you know, 90 degrees, they don't do too well. They, they actually prefer the cooler weather. Now we have the irrigation system in here, right? Correct. Now how often does this get watered? Uh, so there's drip irrigation mm. under each, each row and that will uh, run depending on the weather. Um, we like to give them, you know, at least a half an inch of water per week. So if there's no rain, that doesn't seem like much. No, um, well, it is actually kind of uh, for a strawberry plant. It has a rather shallow root is system it, yeah. and a, not a very large uh, leaf structure. Hmm. Whereas a corn plant, when it's reaching full maturity, that one tends to need about an inch per week. Oh. So different crops require different quantities of water. Right. Um, also, it depends on the air. If you have a, uh, a lot of still days with no wind and high humidity, mm. you're going to get a lot less transpiration. Oh. Whereas if you have dry days and a heavy wind, then you're going to have a lot more transpiration. So oh. the amount of water you give to the plant, you're really replacing the water it's taking from the soil. Oh, okay. So in this case, to answer mm. your question, mm. we would probably run that drip irrigation maybe about 8 to 10 hours per week. That's not, that's not that bad, does No, it? it's really not that much water. No. Uh, the drip irrigation actually saves about at least 50% uh, oh. water compared to um But look at overhead. the harvest you get. Even with that small amount of water, you mm -hmm. still get an enormous harvest here. Correct. All, look at all these flowers ready to... Yep, you can see all the, all the flowers we'll be harvesting um, for a long time to come. Now, how long will it take for the flowers to turn into a strawberry? Uh, it depends on the point. weather. Um, yeah. Around about three weeks, three weeks at this yeah. time of year. Cool. All right. All right. You want to go eat some different fruit? Sure. What do we have? We have uh, raspberries? Yeah, we can head over to some raspberries and blackberries over here if you like. Oh, this would be good. Do you put strawberries in a salad? Have you done that? I usually eat them before they get to the salad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of eat them yeah, I right can away. Understand really. why. <laughs> yeah. This is another I've nice one. I've seen them in a salad, but I, I'm not so sure I want strawberries in my salad. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Let's go. Well, Dave, I see uh, since we've been here uh, last June, there's a new addition behind me, and I see you have a new greenhouse. Yep. Now, what do we have in this greenhouse? We're constantly making improvements on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, we put that greenhouse up last year, and uh, we grew a crop of spinach in it. Oh. Uh, so we planted the spinach last uh, September, hmm. and we really didn't harvest any in, uh, in the fall, but it overwintered in there. Even though we had a super cold winter, oh, it remained just warm enough in there uh, so that the spinach survived through the winter. That's terrific. And then we started harvesting the spinach again in March. Oh, wow. So all of March and April into May, so we, we did harvested. Very well in there. Yeah. And then in May, we started harvesting spinach outside. Oh. So it kind of gave us uh, spinach two months earlier. That's great. Uh, right now, there's uh, tomatoes in there. And uh, tomorrow, we're actually going to be seeding some uh, kale. We're going to transplant kale in there. Um, oh, that's great. I love probably that. in October, and that kale won't be for harvest this year. That'll be for next spring's oh. harvest. So we're going to do half kale and half spinach. Did you do uh, Swiss chard? Swiss chard out here? Yeah, we grow about three quarters of an acre of Swiss chard. That one doesn't overwinter very well, mm. though. It, it doesn't take the, the cold temperatures. Now the kale, there's several varieties. I know mm. that we've had. I, I think I called it dinosaur. Yep. Is that what it's called? Or yep, dinosaur, okay, also known as right. Tuscan. <laughs> Also known as lacinato, it's a, it's an Italian variety. It's a different uh, consistency on the leaves. It is. Very it different. Is. But yeah. the taste is, is still. I, excellent. I actually prefer that one. Do you? Um, but it doesn't take the cold as well. So by November, that one's not going to be too we happy. We grew that, and it was very very good. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the other the some of the other varieties we grow of kale will last well almost pretty much till Christmas. How, what do you do with your kale? Uh, I had some this morning actually. Just kind of saute it in a pan with some olive oil. Mm -hmm. Scramble up some eggs. Ooh. Throw in a few spices in the eggs. Kale omelet. Throw it in there after the uh, kale has kind of, you know, softened up. Yeah. And then uh, just kale and eggs. Sounds good. Great breakfast. Sounds real good. Yeah. Let me ask you about uh, ramps. 
Mm-hmm. Are you f- familiar with ramps? I'm not, actually. It, I mean, I know I, what I they are. I believe it's but... in the Onion family. Correct. I saw it on TV, but I said, you know, I don't think I've ever seen any ramps when we come out here. Yeah. The, uh, more Quebec and Vermont seem to be oh, m- better known for it. I don't know if it, it likes the cooler temperatures or the more wooded areas. Hmm. I don't know. What are exactly. they, like leafy? I what don't know. Scallion? Oh, they look like a scallion? Yeah. Hmm. But again, you harvest them in a wooded area. Oh, do you? Yeah. I was just curious. I saw it and I said, I don't believe I've seen but a this ramp. This is not a ramp time of year. Not a ramp time of year. Okay. All right. Let's wrap it up. All right, let's ramp, ramp it up. Ramp it up. Oh. <laughs> you missed that, huh, Dave? I, I got it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this behind me. What a beautiful shot this is, Bob. And uh, what do we have growing here, Dave? Um, take a guess. Spinach? No. Carrots? No. Radishes? No. All right. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I can, last uh, Thanksgiving, <laughs> around last Thanksgiving, we actually planted garlic here. Garlic. And there was garlic here growing uh, through the winter, basically. Wow. Um, and then we harvested all the garlic about two weeks ago. And then we plowed it all under. And then we planted a late crop of beans. Oh, green beans. Wow. So these beans might barely just make it in time before frost. If oh, we have a late frost, they'll be ready around the end of September. I put mine in hanging baskets because I have a very... Uh, Hungry woodchuck. Oh. So I said, no, you're not going to get them. So I put them in a hanging basket and Woody roamed around. You're pretty he, smart, Gay. Uh, hey. Yeah. I outsmarted that little rodent. I <laughs> 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 couldn't think about it after being taken so many years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, one year I had to plant green beans three times. I put chicken wire yeah, all the yeah, inside. Yeah. He's still burrowing underneath. Nice. I went, oh, that's it. You know what we planted this year that was different, and they're delicious, edamames. Edamame, oh, oh they're that's wonderful. healthy. Yeah. yeah, we put them in a hanging basket. They're delicious. I mean, we've been eating them raw, but obviously you can cook them and just put right. a little parmesan on it or whatever sure, you want, sure, you sure. know. Good for you. Soybeans. Well, do you Soybeans. remember a few years ago you got lost in this field? I did. Yeah. Is this when the maize was yeah, here? Yeah. This, that's when the maize was here. Yeah, it, it was pretty But you amazing. won't get lost in the bean field now, will you? No, no, I think I can find my way out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Gay, lost in the edamame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think I only planted like, I don't know what I would plant, two or three of those in a in a basket. But I think next year I would plant more. Right. Because you get you get a lot of them. The, the outside of the pod is very uh, hairy. Right, right. It's really good. Fuzzy. Yeah, fuzzy. Kind of like a peach. It is, kind yeah. of. Um, we're actually growing a lot of, that, harvesting a lot of peaches now over Are at you? our orchards in, uh, in Westford, over at the Hill oh. Orchards. We, we have peaches, plums, we finished with the apricots already. Oh. Now we're picking a lot of nectarines uh, and apples. We'll, we'll pick some apples here as well. Nice. And pears too, about five oh, different varieties pears? of pears. Yeah, we're already harvesting the Claps favorites, uh, the red Bartlets are now ready. Mm. Probably next week the Bartlets will start. The I bosks have... aren't ready till later in September. I have a pear tree. But I also have squirrels, and they go after my pears. Hmm. Have you ever seen that? Uh-huh. Mm. I know. I see, I see the branches going like this. I said, what is, what's going on in that tree? And there's a squirrel looking right at me. I said, get away from my pears. Did he understand you? Uh, only when I chased him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, leave them alone. <laughs> All right, well, we were heading over to this area to get to, this, to the raspberries. We're right. almost there. We're almost there. Let's get to some raspberries because I think we're hungry. Let's do it. Well, we almost didn't wait for Bob, did we, Dave? No, we almost no. left him in the dust. We did, because right to my right over here, Bob, there are a lot of red raspberries. And I think we're going to go in and pick a couple and see. So we picked a lot of raspberries this morning. Yes, we, we started did. at the top of the hill and we picked downhill. Oh. We, this is pretty much where we stopped. So tomorrow morning we'll pick up here. Finish here. So you have a few you can eat there. Yes. Yes. So we grow about four or five different varieties of uh, raspberries. This is uh, the last variety called uh, Heritage. Oh. Or is it Caroline? Maybe this one's Caroline. Do they vary in sweetness? Yes. Mm-hmm. They always do. And depending on weather. Yeah. But this variety uh, just started uh, maturing about two weeks ago. Oh. And this is a late variety that will go right until frost, love them, right into English. October. <laughs> Similar to those late uh, strawberries. Mm. We'll have these nice and late into the well, season. Well, the bees are still pollinating. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're very good. Uh, we have some earlier varieties that start maturing in um, mid-June. Mm-hmm. 
over there in the plastic uh, roofed uh, high oh. tunnel. We planted some raspberries uh, this spring. Mm -hmm. We'll start harvesting those next spring, hopefully the first week of June. So my goal is to have a, a pretty continuous uh, raspberry harvest from June 1st to about October 15th. No, so when is the last harvest here? Frost. Well, when we have a Before, hard, really like more of a freeze. Before, say, October, probably? Yeah, sometime in October, yeah. you could say. We almost mm. always make it into October now. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Global warming is pushing back the, uh, the first frost, I find. We need to send the cold somewhere else, and the Earth needs to revolve so we have the constant warmth, and they can have our cold. You want to evolve the Earth? I do. Okay. I Good do. Good luck. I want <laughs> I don't want any more cold here. <laughs> we want to eat this all year round. What if round. we just evolve you and send you south? Well, there's a possibility. <laughs> <clears throat> but we try to uh, keep our, our rows rather narrow mm. so that we have a good amount of uh, air movement. Um, oh, so they don't get all... Yeah, because then you start to get moldy berries and yucky berries. So you can see there's a lot of air movement uh, amongst these branches. Mm. And that really helps to give us a nice health, healthy berry. So obviously we'll pick a lot of raspberries again tomorrow, mm. um, and then the next day, and the next day. Now, how much does this produce? We, I mean, well, there's so many, you can't say anything from one bush, obviously, but uh, you get quite a few. Probably get at least 5,000 pounds of raspberries out of this patch, if not a lot more than that. And where do they go? Uh, all over eastern Massachusetts. Mm. Um, from CSA. pretty much a little bit where we go as far as south as Quincy, uh -huh. uh, as far north as Newburyport, oh. as far west as Westford. So you must have a lot of farmers markets right now. Yep, farmers markets and the CSA. Right. Um, we've got over a thousand members uh, that participate in the That's CSA. Excellent. Really built uh, up, didn't it? Yeah, you know, people like people love it. You know, and the, especially families with kids. Mm. You know, the kids love it, and yeah. um, you know, the the kids are eating healthier. Everybody eats healthier, obviously. Sure. Not just the kids. But no, it's it's very well received, and you know everybody has to eat. And That's true. People are trying to eat as, health, as healthy as possible. Plus, it tastes good. It tastes good. In the case of the raspberries, I mean, mm. they were picked this morning, and the people are eating them this afternoon. Look at that, huh? And then you know tomorrow, we usually try to pick the raspberries about every two days off of the same plant. Um, so we'll start at the top, go down, you know, about halfway down one day, and then the next day the other half. So are you and your fruit? CSA now, or are you just combining? We do both. Uh, we both. do a vegetable CSA and a fruit CSA. Okay. And then starting in November, we combine the two. Oh, okay. But by then, the only fruit really is apples. Oh, yeah. Speaking of apples, there's Ooh. some behind us. You want to go check them out? Is there? Yeah. Well, well let's stop and have one. some corn first oh, let's before we get to the apples. Yeah. Okay. Dave's clearing the brush out for us. Well, thank you. You're such a gentleman. <laughs> clearing out the brush to get to the corn. <laughs> well, this is called a green manure. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> So I see we have some um, really big corn behind us. What variety do we have? Well, try one. Tell me what you think. All right. This uh, corn is barely ready. Let me do that for you. Sure. Is there a quicker way than what I was doing? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I was doing one leaf at a time. <laughs> you know. It's worth it when you get to the corn. Mm. Oh, that is so sweet. Mm. That's um, perfect butter? ripeness. It's a butter mm. and sugar. Wow. Now, when did you plant this? About 80 days ago. Ah. So let me ask you, how long does it take for radishes to come to? Radishes. Mm. Um, depends on the time of year. Anywhere from 22 days to two months in November. Oh, okay. Because I planted radishes, but I planted them in a pot. It That's said you different. could. Yeah. They said you can put it in a pot. So I got a mm -hmm. big pot, and I put. Uh, they're called water watermelon radishes, and Those they're are white. Good to store, also. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. How do they taste? I haven't gotten them yet. Very good. Are they, are they sweet? Sweeter than the red ones? A little bit. The red ones are kind of peppery, aren't yeah. they? Well, it depends on the, how you grow them and, oh. the, and the temperatures. Mm. Since we're right here, I thought I'd point out... Um, what is this now? Is this for um, critters? It's an insect trap. That's what I said. <clears throat> so on the bottom mm. is this little thing here. Bob probably can't see it. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Did you say and that? And that has a, uh, what's called a pheromone in it, which is an attractant to the insect. Is it a scent? Yes, so it's a scent that they're mm. attracted to. Right. So they're attracted to that scent, so they're flying around, and they say, ooh, that smells what I like. Mm -hmm. They come over here because they smell it there, and they, they naturally fly up uh, when they're blocked, blockaded. Oh, they do, so yeah. they fly up into this cone, and they, and get, they, get, they get trapped in the top here because it's kind of like a funnel shape at the top, and then yeah. they can't get out. So that's an insect trap that we use for the, for the corn. Now, how many of those do you put in here? There's, there's one, one. Yeah, there's two, one here. There's another one. Any. There's another one inside there oh, as well. Oh, there's one inside. Yeah. Ah. Oh. So you get actually quite a few insects. Cuttons. Depends on the time of year. Sometimes there's a lot. Sometimes there's not. What kind of insects? They beetles, um, maybe. No. Um, you're usually European corn borer <clears throat> and corn earworm. Mm. Are they Sometimes native? some fall armyworm. Mm -hmm. Well, the European corn borer. And from its name, uh, that one originated in, in, in Europe. And they come all the way over here. Well, now they're indigenous. Uh, well, not indigenous. <laughs> now they're, 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 they overwinter here, but mm -hmm. not in this part of the country. They overwinter more south. Oh. When we get these storms coming up the um, eastern seaboard, mm -hmm. oftentimes a lot of these insects will come up with the storms. Oh, they're just sort of blow-ins. Exactly. Really? Yep, they're blow-ins. <laughs> they usually don't overwinter here because it gets too cold in the winter. Oh. <clears throat> So usually you don't have those um, insects here, usually until some point in July or August, depending on the year. So they, they don't survive the winter, obviously, but, but yet they come back every year? Correct. Okay. All right, let's go get some apples, and then we have to get to a dinner. Wait a minute, I think Bob has a question. What's Brazilian corn? What is Brazilian corn? There we go. We've heard Ask about Ask a Brazilian. <laughs> 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 um, Brazilian corn, I believe, and I'm not an expert on that, mm. uh, it tends to be uh, different varieties. Uh, it's usually not as sweet, um, but not as sweet, but you might have a little bit more corn flavor. Yeah, I thought it was um, very bitter, bitter corn. I think the, the Brazilians um, like that corn, mm -hmm. even though it's not something we could eat like this because it's not that sweet. But someone had told me that they actually do something to it and they make desserts out of it because it's not something you want to eat like this. It's a little too too bitter or something. I don't grow it. Okay, I know. Let's go get an apple. That's all good. This is beautiful. We're out here in the apple orchard and look behind us. Now, we'll, we'll just get out of the way for a second and Bob has a beautiful panoramic view of all the, now these apples. What kind of apples are we talking here? Uh, we're in the Cortland, <clears throat> Cortland section right now. Uh, we grow about a dozen different varieties here in this block of orchard. Mm. It's about uh, four acres uh, in, in, in size. Are with, we on uh, your way here, Bob? We'll move out a little bit so you can get a good shot. Uh, these, this variety of mm -hmm. Cortland won't be ready for another three to four weeks. Uh, we do have some ginger golds that we're harvesting now. Mm. We have some McGowans, some um, Gold Rush, Golden Delicious, mm. Macintosh, of course. Um, now, the Gala, are these the most popular Braeburn. cooking apple? Cortland? Yes, they are, by far. And jo uh, Jonah Red, are they...? Jonah Red's not so much for cooking, but it's a good variety. It's a good eating. Uh, at our other orchard, we're also harvesting some Gravensteins right now. Oh, I don't... We've already harvested all the Paula Reds. Are they sweet, Gravensteins? Mm, not so much. No? It's, you Can might you think of it more towards... Not, it's not sour. Oh. Gravensteins an excellent early cooking apple, oh, actually. Okay. Kind of use Gravensteins until the... Um, for them for a whole month before the uh, Cortland's ready. Oh. Yeah. That's terrific. So, so you have quite a few varieties out here. Yeah, like you I said, yellow, about... you have yellow apples? Yep. Uh, golden, golden, golden Delicious, delicious. Gold Rush. Mm. Uh, I think of those are the two. And then the Ginger Gold as well. Mm, that's very good. Yeah. So we're growing a lot of different uh, fruit and vegetables yes, here on the are. farm. I, uh, I've noticed how big these trees have, have gotten yeah. since we were here last. Yeah. They've really shot up. Yeah. No, they're because you were having a problem with the deer. Do you still, or have we have? No, we put up the there, deer right? fence, yeah, to keep the deer out. So then, but you can see we, to... we've also similar to the raspberries. We've we've pruned these trees so that you can get a lot of light and air in here, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. Minimizing a lot of the uh, disease problems. Um, so you can see how nice and light and airy it is. I think it's a so a few more weeks and these will be ready. Yep, about uh, three more weeks, three three to four. Mm. So Terrific. we have to go to a dinner, Gay. Right, I don't want to be late that's for right, dinner. Go. Dinner in the barn. We're going to dinner in the barn right, now. Let's folks. go to dinner, Bob. Come on. <laughs> really? 
Okay, guys, my name is Justin Jordan. I'm from Elder Services. That's Renee Baker in the back. She's from Elder Services, too. Bonnie Sisson, she's from Elder Services. Chef Bob, he's from Chefs of the Old World. And this is Farmer Dave. He owns the farm. <laughs> and this is Elder, Elder Services' third annual Farm to Table Tasting. This event's uh, around fresh food, and we're just trying to create awareness and uh, educate elders on fresh food and really how to prepare it and how to serve it and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to introduce Farmer Dave, Chef Bob. They're going to talk a little bit about the farm, and then he's going to get into his presentation of how to prepare fresh local food. All right, here's Farmer Dave. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. I apologize. I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit. Um, I guess I'm talking a lot these days. This is not a speaker. I guess. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce my fiance Jane. We're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna be getting married in less than three weeks. It's a busy time of year on the farm. Uh, I'd also uh, like to uh, give a round of uh, applause <clears throat> to the 48th anniversary of my parents over here. Uh, so welcome to the farm. I think we're going to have a wonderful uh, uh, dinner here. And uh, this is my farm, as you can see out the door. Um, I started uh, working on farms here in Dracut uh, when I was a kid working at Brock's farm. I um, have been leasing the Brock's farm also since 1997 and continue to do so. And I've, been, um, I've owned this farm since 2006. We also grow <clears throat> at Hill Orchard in Westford and the East Street Farm in Tewksbury. So basically we're growing in three different farms on a total of about 100 acres. We have three farm stands, about 10 farmers markets, and a very large CSA program with about 1,000 members that get fruits and vegetables every single week. We also have a lot of greenhouses where we grow a lot of crops uh, off of the main season. Uh, many different tomatoes and cucumbers and different greens. So we grow a very wide variety of fruits and vegetables in different areas uh, and we feed a lot of people. So I don't want to go on too long. Uh, I guess you have some folders with some information about the farm that you can uh, pick up later. And so without further ado, let's talk food. Thank, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, once again. Uh, for the past couple of years, uh, we've been blessed by having Justin and Renee invite us to uh, help out in some of these uh, demonstrations. It, again, as Justin said, to promote awareness of some of the fresh fruits and vegetables that are right in our area. Uh, we, uh, I've traveled to different towns. Um, this is the first time uh, being here with Dave and we get a, uh, a sampler box that we kind of make this little um, tasting. And I was blessed to see that Dave put in some, uh, were they yellow carrots, Dave, that yes, you gave us? Carrots. So yellow carrots, which some of these items that I saw are, are very special to a chef in the kitchen. The farmers are our best friend because when we present food, we try to get the freshest possible food because in essence, that's what makes, uh, that's what makes our job a lot easier. So I want to thank Dave for uh, some of the nice fresh vegetables that we, uh, that we got in the box from Justin uh, to make. What we're doing today is um, in the package, I don't know if Justin uh, gave you the package yet, but you will be able to get uh, our recipe of a simple uh, vegetable soup which we put together for many reasons. I know it's summertime and I know it might be a little bit warm today. However, soups are a year-round thing. Uh, I try to keep it somewhat light today. Um, Dave, uh, in the box, Dave had some zucchini and he had some um, yellow squash and carrots and some nice fresh celery uh, as well as some fresh onions. So I took it upon myself to, uh, to make a, what I call just a regular vegetable soup. Now, soups are a very simple and quick way, especially uh, when we don't have a lot of time to put a meal together and stop for a minute and think to yourself, uh, you know, vegetable soups, uh, studies have showed that they're very high uh, in nut uh, nutrients, uh, something that we all need, especially as, as we get a little older. Uh, the other thing that they are is they um, kind of quell our appetite a little bit. 
what I mean by that is, is study, other studies have shown that if you're watching your weight and you, you know, you're conscious about you know, what we're doing at, at, at later stages of our life, soups can be a help in that respect. Of course, the soups with starches such as rice or pasta or potatoes kind of can't, can't, can't fall in that same category. So what I did today, you don't have the recipe in front of you, but um, my two assistants, which I forgot to introduce, they're very important to us today. They're uh, preparing a little sample. Uh, I call it a summer vegetable soup. And I gave you uh, briefly the ingredients. Uh, I'll go over them again. They're a simple uh, onion, uh, celery, Dave's yellow carrots. Uh, we, we got the zucchini, summer squash, and I made it with a, a vegetable base. Uh, you can, you know, don't be afraid to buy at the supermarket and always keep in your cupboard uh, a nice vegetable or a nice chicken stock because that can, uh, that can expediate how much time you take in the kitchen to put things together. My assistant, my sister Diane, and my, my lovely niece Riley, what they're doing as I speak is they're just lightly um, uh, buttering some bread and it uh, tastes like butter, so it's not real butter, so if anybody is worried, it's a margarine. Uh, we also will have a few pieces of dry bread so that when you get the sample, if you want something with no butter on it, tell Justin of one of, one of us and we'll take care of it. And we're going to start ladling out some of the soup. Now, um, there's a couple of different ways. As I talk, I'm going to pop this open so that they can get a few of these things ready. With vegetables, I'm sure Dave will uh, attest to this. Uh, there's many ways. It's not just putting vegetables in a, which, don't get me wrong, steaming and boiling vegetables are very good, but tr why not try roasting vegetables? When you go to the farm stand and when you get fresh product, lightly oil a pan, lightly toss with olive oil a pan and your, let's say, carrots or broccoli or any type of vegetable, even a squash. If you don't feel like peeling the squash, at least cut it in half, take the seeds out, cut it in pieces and put the skin side down. Roasting vegetables really intensify the sweetness. There's, a, there's natural sugars in everything that's grown. So these, these sugars, you know, you guys have probably remember I'm going to say liver and onions, but the way I know, but the people, the people who like that dish like the caramelized onions. Caramelized onions are used in many different dishes, but the sweetness that is brought out by that onion is something that's way different than actually sauteing or steaming onions. But these are all little tips that when you're in the kitchen, feel free to utilize the vegetables that are grown locally. Dave will tell you, Sometimes these products that we get in the supermarket are picked not at their peak season. We only have a shortened abbreviated growing season here in New England, so take advantage of it when we can. Okay? Uh, any questions? Okay, if you have any questions while you're sampling, feel free to ask, and I appreciate being here again, and thank you very much. Sure. Do we want to bring one over and I'll go through one? <clears throat> so our CSA program, um, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And I'm just going to stand over here so I don't get in the way of the soup. <clears throat> so in Community Supported Agriculture, it's a type of farming and eating that's a little bit different than the traditional market-based system that we have in the United States where the farmer grows a product and then people go to market and buy it. In the CSA model, um, people basically sign up with the farmer for a share of the harvest. So all the marketing, if you will, and purchasing gets done before the seeds even go in the, in the ground. And then as we harvest uh, the product from the field, and I want to make sure we have a nice varied harvest throughout the season, um, the, the shareholders of the farm uh, for the season get uh, a variety of fruits and vegetables each week. So this week, for example, you can see we have a, a regular size share and a small size share. Um, we have celery, uh, scallions, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, broccoli, broccoli 
All this has been harvested in, within the last 24 hours, so it's super fresh. Uh, Bob mentioned that a lot of the produce that we get in the supermarket uh, has been harvested somewhat immature so that it can be stored longer and shipped better so it doesn't bruise as easily. In the case of tomatoes, as we all know, you want those tomatoes to be harvested vine ripe for best flavor. So we have these nice fresh tomatoes that were harvested either yesterday or this morning. Uh, we have different colors of uh, peppers, different flavors of uh, peppers. We like to grow, uh, put in some different variety of things as well, uh, such as kale. Kale's become more and more popular. Um, so this is a sample of what was um, sent out this morning uh, to our CSA locations. A little bit of uh, broccoli, uh, bok choy, onions. It looks like you also have some onions on your tables. Uh, green beans and wax beans. The yellow carrots that Bob mentioned. We grow about six different varieties of eggplant. This is a Sicilian variety. <clears throat> and of course, uh, our famous sweet corn. Um, so each member gets some sweet corn this week. Cucumbers, we grow regular cucumbers and pickling cucumbers. And then in addition to the fruit share, I'm sorry, in addition to the vegetable share, we also have a fruit share. <clears throat> and the fruit share this week included uh, peaches, which we're harvesting out of our uh, Westford Hill Orchard. So these were picked yesterday or the day before. Uh, some donut peaches, a smaller, sweeter peach. Uh, some Paula Red apples from our orchard. Uh, a box of raspberries harvested this morning. As well as um, <clears throat> melons. It's now melon time of year, so we're harvesting from our Tewksbury fields cantaloupe. A red flesh watermelon. And this one's my favorite. It's a yellow flesh watermelon. I find it much, much sweeter than the red flesh. Yeah. So you can see we have a nice variety. Um, people obviously enjoy it. Um, that's why they can decide to uh, renew every year. Um, and then they tell their friends and, you know. The only one downside that I ever hear is that it's too much food. Um, so a lot of people will sometimes uh, split shares, sometimes parents that are a little bit older will buy a share and then have their kids come over and take some of it home to make sure that they're eating healthy. Uh, family with children love it because their children actually eat more of the vegetables because they are so fresh and flavorful. This CSA, is that for individual people or are you dealing with, and how do you get involved with it? Is it like a food stamp program or something? No, uh, in, your, in your folders that you're going to get to take home. They'll be on the table at the end for you to grab. Yeah. So people can pay partially with uh, their EBT cards as well as an option. Um, but they usually pay before the season and we have payment programs as well. So people can start paying as early as January. Um, we have a spring share that starts in March and goes until June. And right now we're in what we call the main season which goes from June through October. And then we have another period called the late fall season, which will go uh, until the middle of December. <clears throat> so you can sign up online. People will um, sometimes just um, mail, in, mail it in. You can pay by credit card, by check. We try to make it flexible and easy for everybody. Yeah. Yep, yeah, uh, several farms do it now. In L Wilson Farms in Lexington does it also. Yeah. Any more, any more questions about our CSA program? Everybody's enjoying their soup? Yes. <laughs> yep. So enjoy. Keep the growing going. <laughs> Oh, a uh, question right here. Uh, we have some apples over here that you can take home. Uh, if you want to purchase some of my product, uh, depends which town you're in. We're, we have the three farm stands open today at the Hill Orchard in Westford, the East Street Farm in Tewksbury, or the Brock's Farm Stand here in Drakeit. Uh, we're also at uh, some farmer's markets today. 
Uh, today is what, Thursday? We're in Lynn, Lynn Chelmsford. We're at the Chelmsford Farmer's Market today and also um, the Gloucester Farmer's Market. Yesterday we were in um, East Boston and Reading. Tuesday we were in Westford. Monday in Beverly. Um, tomorrow we're in Revere. Saturdays Andover and Wakefield. And Sundays Wilmington, Newburyport and uh, Somerville. Yes. What happened to what? Uh, most of the people that live in Lowell either they we also have home delivery, so we can they can get home delivery in Lowell. And we have some people in Lowell that take advantage of that. A lot of people will come directly here to the farm, or to the farm in uh, Tewksbury or in Westford. So we're kind of surrounded surrounding Lowell. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you'll have some information in your in your pamphlet. Uh, box back in, in front of the Lowell City Okay. We do grow a very wide range of um, product. Um, we also grow um, at some of our farmers markets like in East Boston. We sell to a lot of different um, Central Americans. Uh, we also have certain Brazilian crops that we grow for different markets. Some, we have some uh, um, Asian eggplant as well. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep, our Tewksbury location is on the corner of East and Livingston, which uh, East Street is basically Dascom Road if you were coming off of 93. It's, I actually leased the property from the State Hospital, so it's right, th right there near the State Hospital. It's a very busy farm stand. Uh, we also have our CSA pickup there on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We harvest the, our crops in the three different towns at the different farm locations. Uh, here in Dracut, we have fields here on this farm, at the Brock's farm. Also, if you go through the woods here or down Wheeler Street at the Waller farm and the Taplin farm, we have the fields in Tewksbury and Westford. And presently what we do is we, we harvest the product from all those locations and then bring them to a central location, <coughs> excuse me, which is presently at Brock's farm. Next year, that will be this building next to us here. And I'm going to have better refrigeration, loading docks, so all the product gets harvested from the fields. It will then come here, get washed, cooled down in the refrigerators. On the other side of the building, we have loading docks to put things on the trucks and then go out to those different locations that I mentioned. It's not like the uh, East Street area, they weren't growing anything this year. No, they are. Yeah, we're, all those melons were harvested from there. Um, I guess I looked for the, the corn. Yes, yes. That field over there, so different fields lend themselves better to different crops. Uh, we've always had problems with corn in Tewksbury because it's such a sandy soil. We'd have to irrigate almost every four days, uh, which was just too much, too much work to irrigate that much. So we've basically switched over to drip irrigation over there, and corn does not lend itself to drip irrigation very well. So we usually grow sweet potatoes, cucumbers, summer squash, zucchini squash, uh, kusa squash, um, and all the cantaloupe and watermelon over there. And we also do a late crop uh, after the first <clears throat> summer squash and zucchini is harvested. We'll often plant our last batch of kale, collard greens, and broccoli, and cabbage over there. So that's growing over there as well. And we'll harvest those uh, late crops right through uh, into December, actually. Now, the cantaloupe, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I bought it in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I've the last I bought in the trash. Um, well, see, part of the problem is most of this, most of the uh, cantaloupe that you get in the in the supermarket usually comes out of Arizona or California at this time of year. Um, in the winter, it usually comes from Chile. And whenever they're shipping something, you always have to harvest that fruit a little bit less ripe, so that the um, the, uh, this, the rind is a little bit stiffer and can withstand the shipping. So 
you have to be very careful when you're harvesting it that early to try to get it at that almost ripe period. Whereas when I harvest a cantaloupe, uh, cantaloupe's much easier than a watermelon to harvest. If it won't pop off the stem, mm -hmm. it's not ready. So if you get one of my cantaloupe, you know that we haven't harvested it if, it if the stem won't let go. But if you're shipping it and it has to last for at least a week, you have to harvest it a little bit greener and you almost have to knock that stem off a little bit. Uh, in the case of the watermelon, we usually go by the knock. Uh, first we look at the color. Once you start to see some yellowing on the uh, watermelon, you know that that's a sign that it might be almost mature. And you give it a slight knock. Uh, you want a, a lower, lower pitch sound. Uh, then a higher pitch sound. A higher pitch sound means that it's not ready yet. So in the supermarket on the watermelon, you can go by the knock also. Now, does each street sell the cantaloupe right there? Oh yes, yep. Uh -huh. All of our locations sell the uh, the the all the all the melons. Right. At Brock's Farm, we also have the cantaloupe and the watermelon, the red and green. Um, right now, we have a good amount of all of them. Uh, the cantaloupe is going to start to go downhill a little bit. Whereas the watermelon will have right till the middle of September. So we get past cantaloupe. Uh, in another week, you will. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You are here at the perfect time for your farms because everyone is into fresh vegetables. Oh. I mean, it didn't matter in the fifties when I grew up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it didn't matter whether it was fresh or right. whatever. Now I go to three or four farmers markets a week. If not farms, yeah. <coughs> get my first right. What happened? Right. I don't know. You would have to ask them about that. Yeah. I mean, we have the farm stand right there. Uh -huh. Right. 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 No, you're right. I think the American diet is slowly switching from a uh, meat and potatoes to more of a Mediterranean, if you will, or almost an Asian mark, Asian type of diet with a lot more greens in it. If you look at the uh, you know Chinese and Vietnamese type of diet, you see a lot more greens, and you'll you see the American diet slowly switching towards that. Yeah. If you go to our website, we have a lot of recipes on the website as well. Yeah. <laughs> library. Go to the library. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Right. Well, now a lot of the, a lot of people are vegetarians and are learning that you don't necessarily have to have meat, and you can replace the uh, you know get proteins from vegetables and from legumes. Right. No, a lot of our health problems originate with our diet. Yes. You're right. Exactly. Question over here? What is your anemic? What is a good vegetable for your anemic? Hmm. Spinach. Perhaps kale also? Kale. A lot of your your dark greens. Yeah. And you can see, you know, in the box we have a lot of a lot of kale. Uh, the bok choy, I would assume the, the broccoli as well. That whole brassica coal, coal crop family would be very good. Hmm. I've, seen, I've seen a lot of uh, Caesar salads are now starting to switch away from um, romaine lettuce and they're so now making Caesar salads from um, chopped up kale. It's much healthier. Yeah. Uh, here at this farm, it's about 30 acres. We grow on a total of about 100. Yeah. Any questions from this table? Besides this one? You have apples too? Yes. Can yeah. yeah. you grow them here too? Yep. Yeah. We have a four acre orchard back here. Uh, we have a 10 acre orchard in Westford. 
where we have pick your own apples. Then you know the whole orchard. Right. Right. Yep. Hunt and, Hunt and Chamberlain. Yep. I saw it, but I didn't Correct. The same one. Yeah. Did you have the West Wing on Yes, on Tuesdays. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Now, where are you going to have your wedding? No, it's going to be on the Cape. Her parents live down there now. Yeah. Yeah. No honeymoon till December, though. What made you decide? I said no honeymoon till December. What made you decide to do this? It was Renee's idea. One second. Hi, everybody. Chef Bob has to head out, and I just wanted to thank him and give him a round of applause. I hope you enjoyed the soup. Thank you very much, Dave, and good luck on your marriage. Okay, we'll see you again. Okay, bye, Bob. Thank you. Hi there. So, I think I heard your question, but will you repeat it for me? How did this start? So we actually at Elder Services, Justin and myself and um, Bonnie, we work in the Community Programs Department. Um, and in the Community Programs, we do a lot of different initiatives and projects in the community throughout the whole Merrimack Valley. So we cover 23 cities and towns from Salisbury down to Dunstable. Um, and three years ago, we started holding these farm-to-table tastings, one in each of the regions. So one in Greater Haverhill, one in Greater Lawrence, and one in Greater Lowell. Um, we began them because National Food Day is actually October 24th, and it's something that is celebrated across the country. And really, it's just to bring awareness to people of all ages about fresh local produce and how important it is to eat healthy and um, for, of course, your health and and wellness. So we thought this would be a fun way to do events, something different, you know, for older adults. Um, and this is the first year that we're doing it here, which is really wonderful. And this is actually our first event of the season. So we, you are our guinea pigs for this year, for 2015, and then we have a few more scheduled in the next couple of weeks in different areas of the valley. The was, was it? Oh, Excellent. Wonderful. Very good. So, yeah. So just while I have your attention, um, if anybody has questions about elder services or resources, there is information in these folders that we'd like you to take on the way out, but we're happy to talk to you today too if you have any questions and if not um, there's the number in there that you would want to call with that. There's also some apples that are from Farmer Dave so feel free to help yourself um, and some pens and other goodies on that table. But that really concludes our program. If anybody has any other questions we're happy to answer and walk around and um, talk to people. It is. It's from Farmer Dave. Yellow watermelon. I don't like watermelon. Excellent. Did you have anything else? <laughs> well, Dave, that was quite a little dinner. Well, it's something different, isn't it? it I is. didn't know what to expect. They asked me if I would host it, and why not? And they brought in all the food, and I just had to provide the location. They just threw you right up there and said, "Okay." Yeah, there were a lot of questions. Weren't there? I know there were a lot I should, of questions. I wish I had had a, a speaker, <laughs> a loudspeaker. Yeah, I know. Well, that was a really good soup too. I haven't had any yet. Mm. Is there any left? No, no. <laughs> but you know what we would like is, I'd like to try the yellow watermelon. That well, went uh, like that. That's gone. There's a whole one over there in oh, the crate. <laughs> I was going to say that's all gone. <laughs> But anyway, we've had a wonderful day over here with Farmer Dave. Uh, long time coming. You've had a lot of traveling. I saw you in Ethiopia. Yep, I was what, in Ethiopia this past winter. What did you do over there? I was teaching at an agricultural college. Um, I had about 250 students in the plant science department that I was teaching. Oh. I, was, I went over there for about three weeks only. Oh, that's very I nice. Didn't have as much free time this winter as No, I others. know. We've tried to catch up with you a couple of times, but every time I call you, you were gone. <laughs> so, we're in the world as Farmer Dave. I know. <laughs> that's right. We're in the world as Farmer Dave. <laughs> and it was a very nice day. So, And we thank you for having us over here. And well, I thought it would be something different for you. It is, and, and I'm sure To highlight sure these, something and, you know, hear these, what they're talking about. 
These now wallets. see when when I did watermelon, they told me to hold it, put your hand on the top, and tap it on the side, and then you feel the vibrations. And oh. and a lot the the more vibrations, the riper it is. That would make sense. Hmm. That's the way I test. Okay. I could knock it too. I'll have to try it. Yeah, don't, try don't it. knock it if it works. Don't knock it if it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, we have a lovely day here. And um, Bob, you're going to come over and join us? I have an apple for the road. <laughs> <laughs> one for the road. Oh, one for you, not just for the road. <laughs> Bright martinis, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to good eating. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You really know how to put on lunch. Yeah. Look at all you. Wow. <laughs> We're having a wonderful time. I it was so nice. Tell you the yellow was awesome. Oh, wasn't yeah. it? Good. Yes. <laughs> we have yet to Cheers to yellow watermelons. Yeah, Cheers to yellow. Yellow. <laughs> it went it went off the charts today, I'm telling you. It was very nice to see your fiance. Yep. We wish you both very well. Thank you very much. She's gonna put up with you, right? Well, no choice. <laughs> it's all right, we love you. <laughs> she does too. <laughs> That's a good Hope thing. So. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for joining us. And This uh, is our first uh, show of 2015. It is. Oh, we'll and have to do another one. Day. We'll yeah. have to do more shows yeah. now, now that, now that we're back in the, the swing of things. Uh, so what do we have coming up next? Maybe potatoes? What, what is we our next? We can dig more potatoes if you want. We, we could. What about the rocks? How about the yellow carrots? We, we can dig yellow carrots if you want. <laughs> Let's do that, too. Just tell me what you want to do. Let, we'll do it all. You can roll around the dirt if you want to. Okay, we could. I almost did today. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that I sky. I tripped huh? over that pipe. That is a beautiful sky. Unbelievable. It's always so nice over here. We Don't you feel bad for the people that have to work in offices all day? I know. I know. It's <laughs> awful. Then <laughs> they want to go out and Party. sit in a chair outside. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so? From Gay, Bob, and Dave. Thanks for joining us. Support your local farmer. Support Eat your yellow local watermelons. Farmer. And try the watermelon. Yellow. yellow. Is, that a, is that a song? What? Yellow watermelon? I don't know any oh, watermelon. Oh, I do. Wait a minute. I do know a watermelon song. We all live in a yellow watermelon? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. I learned this at summer camp. What's that? Just plant a watermelon right on my grave. Let the juice slip through. Just plant a watermelon right on my grave. That's all I ask of you. Now southern fried chicken might taste mighty fine, but nothing tastes better than a watermelon rind. So plant a watermelon right on my grave. Let the juice slip through. Wow, that's oh, a great geez. morbid song. <laughs> no, quit See? <laughs> I just remembered. You're I knew a, a watermelon singer. song. Thank you. Thanks for that, Gay. Thank you. And you all practice that at home. <laughs>